Welcome to Electra Online, and in this video we're going to talk about stage 5, 6, and 7 of the development of a star into a real bona fide star on the main sequence. So we left off at stage 4 where we had a protostar that was about 50 to 100 times the size of our current sun. It was continued to contract under the forces of gravity. Temperatures were continuing to climb, so now we reach stage 5. And at stage 5, we can say that the rate is about 10 times the rate that it currently is. It's still much, much larger than its current size. Surface temperatures, with the increase in temperature inside, the surface temperatures are getting hotter and hotter, reaching temperatures about 4,000 Kelvin. And at the center, still not yet hot enough to start nuclear fusion. Temperatures estimated at about 5 million degrees Kelvin. How hot does it have to be at the center for nuclear fusion to start? Well, the temperature should be about 10 million Kelvin. And at that temperature, the molecules, the hydrogen molecules, will be moving fast enough so that when they're on a collision course toward each other, the repulsive forces are not sufficient to stop them in their tracks, and they will collide before the repulsive forces push them away, and that collision will allow them to fuse together into heavy elements and eventually forming helium. That's what nuclear fusion is. And so, temperatures at 5 million Kelvin still not hot enough for nuclear fusion to begin. So, in order to move to stage 6, the temperature needs to be there for nuclear fusion to start. Another very important aspect of star formation is that there must be a minimum amount of mass for the temperature to be reached. For a temperature of 10 million degrees to be reached, enough force of gravity has to push the dust of cloud, the cloud of dust and gas together to a region where the temperature can reach 10 million degrees. And for that to happen, there must be enough mass. Mass is what causes gravity to collapse the star to its size. And the minimum mass required to make that happen is about 8% the mass of the sun. So 0 0.08 times the mass of the sun is sufficient for a star to start nuclear fusion. So there's no stars in the universe that are smaller than that size because if there were, they simply would not have started nuclear fusion. And so that must be the minimum size. As a comparison, 0 0.08 times the mass of the sun or 8% the mass of the sun is about 80 times the mass of Jupiter. Now this is very interesting. Jupiter is a planet, but what it's made out of is just about the same as what the sun is made out of. It's mostly made of hydrogen and helium, about 75% hydrogen, 25% helium. There may be a small rocky core at the center, but not much of the planet is rocky. It's mostly gas. And so we can then say that if Jupiter had been about 80 times bigger than it is today, it would have turned into a star. So then our solar system would have had two stars, our sun and Jupiter. And if Saturn had been big enough, it would have become a star, and then we would have had three stars in the solar system. So this may be the process in which um, stars or uh, star systems can be binary systems where there's two or more stars in the same solar system. In our solar system, that didn't happen. Just a single star, everything else was too small to become a star. And probably because of the fragmentation methodology, there probably weren't two fragments to form two stars anyway, so it was not to be in our solar system. Which is a good thing, because living in a solar system with two stars is probably not a good thing, because the, it would have such a great effect on the orbits of the planets that the, the orbits would not have been stable enough probably to sustain life. So anyway, it's a good thing we only have one star in our solar system. Finally, we reach stage 6. Stage 6 is where the temperature at the center reaches the 10 million degrees Kelvin. Notice when we look at the path on the HR diagram, notice that after stage 4 is reached, the color stays about the same. There's a slight increase in the coloration from red maybe towards orange, but notice that the luminosity takes a big drop. Why does the luminosity take a drop when the outside temperatures it reaches 4,000 degrees and 4,500 degrees, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, so therefore there would be more and more radiation from the surface, but the star is shrinking so fast that the total luminosity begins to drop. This prediction of what exactly would happen on a protostar came from very famous astronomer Koshiro Hayashi from Japan, who predicted that path, and that's now known as the Hayashi track, that a protostar would take towards the main sequence and a lot of observational evidence have proven him to be correct. So finally, by the time we reach stage 6, the size of the star is not much greater than what it is today. Temperature have reached 10 million degrees, nuclear fusion starts, and a tremendous amount of energy are beginning to be generated, and that energy begins to push back against gravity. The contraction begins to slow down even more at that point. So now, very, very slowly, over a very long period of time, 
the star will continue to collapse and become the size that it is today if it's still on the main sequence but that is going to take an enormous amount of time so at this point 10 million years have passed so by the time the by from the beginning when the, the cloud of dust and gas begins to collapse into a what eventually would become a protostar and eventually become a star it takes about 10 million years before nuclear fusion starts again for a larger star that will probably go faster and for a smaller star that will probably go slower but for a star the size of the sun 10 million years is about the right amount surface temperature 4500 Kelvin and slowly over time will become warmer and warmer as the star shrinks the surface gets to be closer and closer to the center of the star where all the nuclear fusion takes place and the temperature in the surface will continue to increase we then get to stage 7 stage 7 takes about 30 million years that's when after nuclear fusion takes place it takes about another 30 million years before the star becomes a bona fide what we call main sequence star where then it's stable and stays there for the next so many billions of years for the sun it will be a main sequence star in its current shape and form for about 10 billion years but it takes 30 million years from stage 6 to stage 7 in other words when the star begins nuclear fusion for the star to become a bona fide main sequence star it takes another 30 million years because there's so much heat being generated that pushes back against gravity that the continual collapse is now very 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 slow and very slowly a balance is being formed between gravitational force pulling inward and the force of the pressure of the radiation produced by the nuclear fusion pushing back along with the pressure from the heat generated in the, in the core of the star and so eventually the star will be balanced out to reach that balancing point takes 30 million years so that contraction continues during that 30 million years temperatures at the center continue to increase until a temperature of 15 million Kelvin is reached at that point since pressure and gravity are balanced the nuclear fusion process then gets into a set pattern where it doesn't increase any longer and so the temperature now have a stabilized 15 million degrees Kelvin at the center and the surface will now have reached about 6,000 Kelvin the surface temperature of the Sun is about 5800 pressure and gravity are now totally balanced so the total time from the beginning of the formation of a star when a huge cloud of dust and gas begins to collapse inward will take about 40 to 50 million years before it's a main sequence star and has reached its final stage as a main sequence star shining away for the next so many billions of years until we reach the next stage so stage 7 it's a main sequence star in its present shape and form putting out the same amount of heat as it is as it will be for billions of years same size same temperature to sur at the surface same temperature at the core and just shining away for the next so many years now imagine if our sun lasts for about 10 billion years what fraction of a time period is the formation of the star well let's see if it would take 50 million years that fits into a billion about 20 times fits into 10 billion about 200 times so this period of the star's life where it goes from beginning of collapse of a cloud of dust and gas to a star on the main sequence is only about one two hundred of the total time that the star will spend on the main sequence of the main sequence star so just a very small fraction only half percent of its total time on the main sequence is spent turning itself into a main sequence star and then it just sits there and for billions of years virtually doesn't change and just shines away giving light which sustains the life that we currently have on earth that's the stage five, six, and seven of the formation of stars.